Welcome to Insight Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. In today's video, we are going to learn about tap changes in transformer. We have made many videos about different kinds of testing, different kinds of wiring of equipments of CT, PT, and also about the wiring of substation control panels. Uh, links to all the videos you can receive in the description box. So, tap changer in transformer. There are basically two types of tap changer in transformer. First is onload tap tap changers, and second is the offload tap tap changers. For onload tap tap changers, what happens is you can change the tapping of the transformer while the transformer is on. In the on condition of the equipment itself, you can change the tapping of the transformer. And in case of offload tap changes, we have to turn off the transformer in order to change the tapping of the transformers. Now, what the question will arise is why tap changer? So, we require tap changes in the transformer to maintain the output voltage of the transformer. What is the requirement to maintain the output voltage? Each and every equipment that we have at our home have some standard voltage ratings. It works at some specific rated voltage. Any equipment, any device, that electrical device that is working on electricity will be working on some specific rated voltage, right? So, we need to maintain that rated voltage. To provide the rated voltage the load, it is very important for a transformer to maintain the output voltage. So, what is rated voltage? Rated voltage is the voltage on which the electric equipment works. Generally, in our home appliances, washing machine, oven or iron, television, refrigerator, electric fan, all this equipment in general have 230 volts AC. So, as a grid operator or as someone who is generating and transmitting electricity, it is very important that they maintain this load voltage, okay, so that all the equipments that are being used in your houses get this rated 230 volts. So, it is very important to maintain the rated voltage. Each and every equipment, say it is in the industry or it is at your houses, will have a nameplate like this. And in all the nameplates, there is a specific indication about the rating of the equipment. Say over here, this is a three-phase induction motor. So, rating over here is mentioned as 220 volt to 240 volt. Again, again a three-phase induction motor, the voltage rating mentioned is 220 volts, right? So, again, this is equipment that is having a rated voltage of 220 volts. Air conditioners mentioned rated voltage is 240 volts. Right, refrigerated air dryer volts of 220 volts. Room heater, again the rating is mentioned as 230 volts. Right, so in each and every equipment, according to the nameplate rating also, we can see that they are working at some specified voltage ranges. And as a grid authority, it is very important that the output voltage, voltage that is reaching at the consumer end, is in a particular range is the rated voltage at which all this equipment in the house or in the industry are working safely okay so requirement of grid code now as a grid authority it is very important to maintain the grid voltage so that the consumer and voltage remain stable right so rated voltage is to be regulated as per grid code. Now, grid code mentions this particular rules for NLDC, RLDC and SLDC and all the user op shall operate in a manner to ensure that the steady state grid voltages as per CA grid standards. See, there are grid standards that are men mentioning to maintain this voltage levels. 
So the operating range that the grid code mentions is something like this. So whenever we are talking about higher voltage levels, say 765 kV, so maximum voltage that you can have is 800 kV and the minimum rating that can go is 728 kV. Similarly, for 400, it is 420 and 380. 220 volt kV voltage system shall be operated in the range of 245 kV to 198 kV. 132 kV shall operate in the range of 145 kV to 122 kV. 110 volt system shall operate in the range of 121 kV to 99 kV. 66 kV shall operate at 72 kV and minimum range is 60 kV. So what happens if you do not obey this grid code or say some disturbance is occurring in the system due to which the voltage range is violated then there are penalties that are issued okay to whoever is not obeying this standard grid code okay so it is very important as someone who is transmitting the power or someone who is having a captive power plant to maintain the grid voltage as per the grid code What is step in the transformer? Now, as we have understood the grid code and importance of maintaining the rated voltage, how we shall achieve that rated voltage? The answer is the tapping in the transformer, right? So, taps in the transformer, you can see over here, it is mentioned as tap 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, okay? And this is a nameplate of a transformer. HV side is having 11 kV rated. And LV side is having 415 volts. Now you can see over here on the HV side it is mentioned 11 kV plus or minus 2 into 2.5 percent. Right. So this over here itself indicates that on the HV side we are having tappings. And on the LV side the output uh, will be constant that will be 100, 415 volts. Now you can see over here. Tap numbering is given from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we are having a provision for 5 taps. In this you can see tap number 3 is 11 kV. That is a normal tap or the normal operating tap as we call it. And when you move from higher say at tap number 2 it is 11.275 kV. And at tap number 1, you are having 11.550 kV. Now, whenever the system voltage is higher, okay. So, if the system voltage is higher, then you need to change the tapping of the transformer to tap number 1. Say it is higher than 11.5, 11.6 kV. Then you have to bring the tap transformer. Transformer or tap should be at tap number 1. If it is slightly higher than the normal range that is 11 kV, say it is around 11.2 kV, then we have to change the tapping of the transformer to position number 2. Similarly, if the system voltage is less, it is less than the rated voltage or say it is less than our normal voltage of 11 kV, say it is slightly less, then the tapping can be changed to tap number 4. And if there is a higher dip in the voltage level, then the tapping of the transformer has to be on tap number 5. So, this is the indication of the tap changing. Okay, at what voltage levels this kind of tappings are done. Now, let us understand through a circuit diagram. So, this is the winding diagram of a transformer. On the primary winding, as you can see, as this is mentioned over here on the nameplate of the transformer also, plus or minus 2 into 2.5 percent. So, this is, as you can see, this primary winding where it is connected at 100 percent tap. On the secondary winding, as the nameplate mentions, there is no tapping. So, this is going to give me a constant voltage output of 415 volts. Now, uh, if we move on the upper side, the number of turns are getting reduced and 
whenever you connect this primary voltage output over here at this point when you connect to this step the voltage will be less minus 2.5 percent you can see over here okay and further when there is a dip in the voltage okay so you can see over here minus 5 percent will be 10 4 5 0 volts similarly when the increase of voltage of 2.5 percent this is the tapping and plus 5 percent again this is the tapping so uh, for each tapping the difference is of 2.5 percent mentioned over here now let us understand uh, in further concept how this voltage of secondary remains constant even when we change this tapping so you can see 11 kv output 415 volts 10.72 kV output 415 volts. So, whenever you change this connection based on the voltage ratings of the system, you will get the output of secondary voltage as 415 volts. That is the standard operating range, or you can say the rated output. Let us understand further in detail how this output is remaining constant. For that we will understand the transformer principle first. So we know the transformer ratio very commonly is V1 by N1 is V2 by N2. V1 is the voltage on the primary side. V2 is the voltage of the secondary side. N1 is the number of turns on the primary side. And N2 is the number of turns on the secondary side. Now V1 will change based on the system voltage v2 will remain constant n2 again number of turns on the second side is remaining constant so let us understand one same concept in the other way is v1 by v2 is n1 by n2 so this is called as the turns ratio right so if V1 is 11 kV, V2 is 415 volts. So, this both are equal. That indicates N1 is equals to 11 kV and N2 is equals to 415 volt. So, from this, a common observation is 1 volt per turn. Right? 1 volt per turn is what we observe from this. Another example is, C voltage is directly proportional to number of turns. If I am having higher voltage, the number of turns will be higher. You can observe over here. If the voltage is normal, this is 100% tap. If the voltage is increasing, say 11.275 kV, then number of turns you can see is also increasing on the primary side. Again, if there is a further increase in the voltage level, say 11.5 kV, the number of turns are full turns. Higher number of turns, higher voltage value. Lesser voltage, then lesser number of turns. Okay, so this is how the transformer principle also works here. Now, the tapping numbers are mentioned. Tap 1 is the highest voltage. Step 5 is the lowest voltage. So, if I want to increase the voltage, I will move to step 1. If I want to reduce the voltage, I will move to step number 5. So, this is the basic tapping principle in the transformer. We just understood it with the help of transformer principle. So, we will see further details about tap changes in the transformer in our next video. Keep watching and ask your doubts in the comment section below. Thank you.